So I'm Rabbi Lionel Rosenfeld. I'm from the Western Marble Arts Synagogue in London, senior rabbi right in the center of town. We've had a year of the Labour Party getting closer to office. And what's the condition of Zionism and Zionists in the uh, political zeitgeist in Britain, today, in the UK today? Well, I don't know if you heard the Labour MP, Joan Ryan, on Sunday evening, Labour Friends of Israel. She's not even Jewish. She was almost crying because what's happened to the Labour Party is really what's happened to Zionism in the country. It's just tragic. We're on a downhill slope from last year when I spoke to you. We have a, a, a conservative government that is uh, sleepwalking towards Brexit with no real discernible leadership. Everyone agrees on that. And we, on the other hand, we have a Labour, go a Labour possible government who haven't really increased in the polls. Normally, with a, they would be miles ahead, but they're not because of this man, Corbyn, because of his refusal to eject anti-Semites from his party and because of the general fear of so many Jews in Britain that anti-Semitism is taking a real hold on what was a great supporter of the State of Israel, the Labour Party. Haven't the, or hasn't the, the Jewish community in the UK traditionally been uh, a liberal-minded politically? Very much so, very much like uh, the Jews of the United States of America, great democratic supporters, so have, you know, I mean, I happen to know that many of our great rabbis have been quietly Labour supporters, but not anymore, how can they be? Labour does not have any of the values that uh, we espouse. Particularly with regard to the Middle East and uh, the growth of the spread of anti-Semitism in Europe? Particularly with that, and also because they condemn the United States and Israel as two colonialist powers, and that's how they see the world. It's becoming a left Marxist party that no one wants to touch with a barge pole, as we would say. And when you say Marxist, you're meaning the, the beginnings of socialism leading to communism? The people who are now running the Labour Party want to eject all previous Labour me members of Parliament who had uh, an idea that Tony Blair was the correct leader, the new Labour as it used to be, which was so successful and popular. They want them all out. They want to start again. What was the, the, the psychological adjustment that it took for uh, liberal British Jews to say uh, this, this party which I've voted reflexively for so long to be able to, to, to say, you know, I'm going to vote against them now. Because of the way they treated, first of all, the Jewish MPs who are in the Labour Party uh, they, and, and of all the tweets and the terrible anti-Semitic slurs against them that they uh, and they realize now that we are in a very toxic atmosphere politically. And they don't know what to do. No one really wants to leave and go on Aliyah. That's, they have no intention of leaving Britain. This idea that Jews are going to be leaving Britain, I don't think is going to happen. We just have to fight to make sure that the Conservative Party comes to its senses and can win the next general election. Or the. Uh Jewish population of Britain, are they supporting the Conservatives now against Labour? I would think there's very few Jews that I know that would vote Labour in the next general election. How can they when they are controlled by a small clique of left-wing previous Marxists and communists? I understand that you're saying that they'll vote uh, uh, Tory, uh, Conservative, but will they uh, uh, campaign and support their campaigns financially? I don't know. I'm not clear about that. But they may vote with their feet and, and not even vote at all. They might just stay away. They're so embarrassed by what's going on. Even though they may have never voted Conservative in the past, they might have to this time. Is this unique in Europe, the UK, in terms of the Jewish population uh, having to modify their, uh, their, their voting and campaigning? for uh, traditionally liberal uh, candidates and parties? I think it's happening around Europe where uh, left-wing parties are, are taking the ascendancy. I mean, you know what has happened to the Jews of France. We have gained in our own synagogue a completely new Sephardic uh, service every Sabbath morning. 
made all young Jews from France under the age of 40 working now in London. The reasons they give is because of the work, but of course they've left Paris, Marseille, Lyon because of the atmosphere there. And uh, we, we see them in, in London now. What is happening in Malmo in Sweden? What is happening in the Netherlands? It's, uh, the Jews are being forced onto the back foot everywhere. Feel a parallel in the U.S. now with this uh, leftward uh, draw? Well, it's being highlighted by the two or three Democratic new members of the House of Representatives, but there are only two or three of them. How comes papers like the New York Times and the Washington Post focus on them exclusively? What's happened to all the other representatives we've seen here who are great supporters of Israel? It's as, almost as though they're proud that these young people are saying what they're saying. How can they be proud of them? They do not represent democratic, uh, most of the democratic voters in the United States. I'm convinced of that. What concern do you have? So far, Britain is still part of the EU. How do you feel about how uh, the EU has been uh, defying the U.S.'s appeal to uh, stop supporting Iran, uh, in who was revealed in violation, uh, proven evidence in violation of the JCPOA and uh, in defying U.S. sanction requests? Well, look, I was always a Remainer. I couldn't believe that we could divest ourselves from Europe. But over the last two years, I have come to realize, as many have, that the European Union has no real, any more want to affiliate with Israel in the way that it has done in the past. It still refuses to acknowledge that the Iranian agreement was a flawed one, a very flawed one. And I feel now it's time for us to leave Europe and to ally ourselves more with the United States of America. I really feel that Europe is no longer what it was in the post-war years. And uh, France and Germany, in the ascendant once again, are forcing Great Britain to leave on any terms. In the same way that in the 1960s, the mod fashions started on, uh, what is it? Uh, Carnaby Street. On Carnaby Street and migrated here, and the music migrated here. Do you feel that this uh, leftist, socialist, communist movement will grow here if we aren't uh, uh, aware and vigilant? I think, I think so. Uh, I think it's, it's happening with the young people who are totally ignorant. The word history is not important to them. They don't want to know what was in the past, even yesterday. They only look to the future and they have not been told the facts. And if you don't know the facts, facts are boring to the young generation. And that's why they're going with these people they see as bright young things, but their policies and their, and their outlook, it is anti-Zionist of course, but it's also anti-Semitic, we know that. What's your sense, you've only been here for a few hours today at APAC, uh, what's your sense of uh, the direction relative to uh, your perspective last year? Last year you were very gung-ho uh, that APAC is uh, invigorating, revitalizing, how about now? Well, I still think it is a magnificent place to come to and to be refueled with my Zionism. But they have a problem because we know that Donald Trump is not the most popular man in town. However, whatever you say about Trump the man, he has done everything for Israel, which no other previous president has done, has promised to do and not done. So, you know, read my lips. And today, the Golan. Uh, La, the, the, Jerusalem as the capital of Israel, the embassy there, I could go on and on. And why don't the whole, why don't 18,000 people stand and applaud when it's due? What have they got? What is, what is wrong with them, you know? I'm sorry, and I'm not a, a Trump activist, but I, I hear the Secretary of State just now, and I was very, I believe he was sincere in, in the way he spoke. He came over tremendously well. I have. And therefore, for me, APAC is still the place to be. And they still have a role to play, a tremendous role. The lobbying that has to go on must continue for the sake of the State of Israel. How about the lobbying uh, in Parliament or in British politics? Uh, the Islamist uh, candidates and parties uh, on the left are growing in strength. What's the future for uh, pro-Israelism and Zionism in the UK and Europe, in your view? Well, I think that it really hasn't changed so much. 
we are at last the the British community, Jewish community, has found its voice. It's gone onto the streets to protest. It never did that. Everything was done quietly. Make, don't make too many overt moves. But now we've changed. We're on the streets. We're saying what we believe. And I, th I don't think that the, the big Muslim uh, community poses a real threat to us uh, as people think abroad. Uh, I recall uh, coming out of the underground station at, King, at Knightsbridge and at Harrods, there, the, the whole street was like a Berlin uh, National Socialist rally uh, uh, against, instead of mentioning, Israel, uh, mentioning the Jews, against Israel. Are there still rallies against Israel and by, by that uh, the supporters of Israel? Yes, there are rallies all the time. If you come on a Saturday to Hyde Park where freedom of speech is valued, they are still saying the most horrible things about Israel. Syria is never mentioned. Yemen is never mentioned. Iran is never mentioned. It's just Israel, Israel. And you have a lot of gullible British people, non-Jewish, who are caught up in this because they believe this is the way forward. We have to say, stay strong and realize that Israel, the pow more powerful it becomes and able to defend itself, the more enemies it will have. That's the way it is at the moment in the West.